なもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつなもんどうぶつ And the April 2021 monthly memorial service. My name is Barbara Fujimoto, and I'm your MC for this service. We have the camera showing the temple altar and the ministers, so please switch to gallery view. Additionally, please keep your microphone muted to ensure clearer sound for everyone during this service. Let us quiet our bodies and minds in God's show for the opening meditation. I would like to quote. A, a statement from Reverend Carol Himaka of the Southern Alameda County Buddhist Church. The quote The contributions of both Eshini and Kakushini have had a lasting impact on Jodo Shinshu Buddhism. Eshini gave Shinran Shonen her complete dedication and support, while Kakushini established the foundation and center for which to transmit his teachings for many generations. Ishini and Kakushini represented women of the Kamakura era who were confident and self aware and who actively participated in the history of Japan. Unquote. Namu Amidabutsu. We'll now have offering of lights and flowers by BWA members. Offering of lights. Mrs. Theo Cushy and BJ Soriano. Let's start the chanting of Vandana Tisarana led by Reverend Daido Baba. You can find the words and the meaning on your screen.
Namo 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 The April monthly memorial dedication and names will be read by Rimban Kazunori Takahashi. Fortunate are we who, having heard the universal truth and having been given everlasting life, shall live this human existence in peace and tranquility, enveloped in Amida Buddha's compassion. Here today, the family and the friends of the late Roy Tsugiyo Amano. Tomie Kuruya, Roy Tsuneo Hirokawa, Yoshiro Hiraoka, Robert Jitchaku, Tracy Kaneshiro, Scott Koya, Akiko Nekoba, Hiromu Nekoba, Tatsuko Nishimura, Satoshi Ota, Akira Sato, Takao Sato, Koichi Taniguchi, Toshiyuki Taniguchi. Have assembled before Amida Buddha to observe the April monthly memorial service. Reverently, we revere the boundless blessings of Amida Buddha with deepest gratitude and take eternal refuge in the three holy treasures of the teachings. Namo Amida Buddha. Namo Amida Buddha. We will now have offering of incense by Kyodan President, Mr. Bert Suchia. Rimban Takahashi will now chant the Sutra 12 homages. Please chant it together with the ministers.
Namandami 
We'll now sing the Gatha on Dokusan 2 in Japanese then in English, accompanied by Charlene Pasquale. You can sing along with Reverend Baba. Mm -hmm. Speaker today via Zoom is Mrs. Lois Tuyama, who has been the president of the Hawaii Federation of Buddhist Women's Association since 2018 and has been a member of Jikoen Honganji since 2004. Lois Tuyama was born in Wixenden, Massachusetts, and is the oldest of 10 children. She received her Bachelor's of Arts degree in English from the University of Massachusetts and her Master's degree in Education from Northwestern University. She worked for the State of Hawaii Department of Education for 40 years. She held a series of constant positions on the Big Island before moving to Oahu, where she became a district resource teacher and subsequently a state resource teacher before her retirement. She has been married to her husband, Piper Toyama, for 51 years. They have two daughters, Malia and Ellie, and four grandchildren who all live in Colorado. In her retirement, she enjoys hiking, lifting weights, reading, and taking art classes. I've had the privilege of attending the 2017 accession ceremony by the 25th Monshu at the Honzan in Kyoto and the post accession tour with her and her husband, Piper. And I'm pleased that she agreed to be our guest speaker today. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak today. I was scheduled to speak on a Shini day at both Hilo and Kauai last year, but due to the pandemic, both events were canceled. I had already prepared my talk and thought I could use the same one, but 
But as I reflected on the events of the past year, I realized I had to make some changes. This talk is for both Hilo and Kauai. The beautiful lei that I am wearing was made by Barbara Fujimoto of Hilo. She also sent this vase with a magnolia flower, Eshini's favorite, that she would have placed on the podium if, if I were speaking at Hilo Betsuin. The Sakura pin, which they're calling the Unity Sakura pin, was made by Carolyn Yamasaki of Kauai. She made one for each BWA member on Kauai to wear during this Ashini Day service. I am in the middle on Oahu, feeling connected to all of you across the state by the golden chain of love that is the BWA. I am honored to speak at this special service which honors Ashini and Kakushini. Every spring, BWA members around the world celebrate Lady Ashini and Kakushini, the wife and daughter of Shinran Shonin, the founder of Jodo Shinshu. Ashini Day was established at the World Buddhist Women's Convention in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 1978. At the World Buddhist Women's Convention in Japan in 1986, Ashini Day was designated World Peace Day. At the World Convention in 2002, again in Sao Paulo, Ashini Day was also designated as a day to honor Kakushini. Today I'd like to speak about Ashini and Kakushini and the impact that their actions had on the propagation of Jodo Shinshu. I'd also like to honor other women who have made extraordinary contributions to the Honganji and who strive to live the Nimbutsu in their daily lives. I find the story of Ashini an intriguing one. Not much is known about her except through a series of 10 letters which she wrote to Kakushini. The letters were discovered only 90 years ago, so until that time people questioned her existence. The 10 letters span the years 1256 to 1268. The first letter was written in 1256 when Ishini was 75 years old and the last when she was 87. Eight of them were written after the death of Shinran in 1262. When Ashini was 72 years old, she returned to Echigo with three of her sons to manage the family property and servants. Kakushini stayed in Kyoto to look after Shinran. In medieval Japan, wife-centered marriages were common. The husband often came to live with his wife's family or to live in a house provided by them. The wife inherited the family's wealth and the husband had little to say in the management of that wealth. Before I read Ishidi's letters, I pictured her to be a woman who flowed through life in a meditative state, in a home fragrant with the Nembutsu, as we say in the Buddhist Women's Pledge. Not so. Her letters are full of the challenges of everyday life, and her challenges were immense. As a landowner, Ishini was consumed with concern about crops and famine. As the owner of eight servants, she was concerned about their well-being and the diseases which plagued them. As a mother, she was concerned that she would never live to see Kakushini again. As a grandmother who was raising two of her grandchildren after their mother died, she worried about what would happen to them after her own death. These are concerns that we can all relate to. In her first letter, Ishini describes her eight servants and bequeaths them to Kakushini. In almost every letter, she says she is sure she will die soon. In describing her personal illnesses, the effects of aging, she says, I am now feeble-minded from the effects of old age, and so I am no longer my own true self. Famine was a fact of life in medieval Japan. During Ishini's lifetime, there were three major famines. In her third letter, she says, quote, in this province, the crop was severely damaged last year. There are many whom I do not expect to survive. Since most of our community is ruined, there is virtually no place to which one can turn. Two male servants who had served me for years passed away in the first month of the year." End quote. While living a life of tremendous responsibility for the productivity of her land and the health and welfare of the many family members and servants who depended on her, Ishini was also concerned about living the Nembutsu. She told Kakushini, 
In the land of bliss, we will know everything clearly. So I hope that you shall live the life of Nembutsu and come join me there. In her third letter, Ashini writes about a dream she had, which was a vision of Shinran as Kan Non, the Bodhisattva of compassion. In letters seven and eight, she specifies a memorial that she wants to build in honor, to honor Shinran. She wants it to be made of stone, seven feet tall, with five tiers. She feels that fears that she will not be able to complete the monument, so asks her children to complete it if she's not able to. Ten years after Shinran died, Kakushini established a chapel to honor him. The chapel had a statue of Shinran on the altar, and his ashes were held there. The site became a pilgrimage spot for followers to come pay their respects and to worship. When Kakushini's husband died, he had left this land to her with instructions to leave it one, to one of their sons when she died. Instead, she placed it in the name of Shinran's followers and designated her descendants as caretakers of the temple. This evolved into the hereditary position of head priest. By building the chapel and leaving it in the care of her descendants, Kakushimi was a main force in establishing the Honganji. As our own Bishop Eric Matsumoto said, Eshini and Kakushini were much more than the wife and daughter of Shinran Shonin. In his book, Buddhism of the Heart, Dr. W Jeff Wilson states that, quote, Shin only exists because of the efforts of women, end quote. That's a very bold statement. He describes Eshini as the co-founder of Jodo Shinshu, along with Shinran. Dr. Wilson cites Eshini's partnership with Shinran during his exile and the example they set by marrying and raising a family, demonstrating that lay people could lead an authentic religious life. Dr. Wilson goes on to assert that the founder of the Honganji is actually Kakushini, the daughter of Shinran and Ishini. Amid the struggles of daily life, women continued to play a strong role in the development of the Honganji. Lady Takeko Kujo, born in 1887, was the daughter of the 21st Gomonshu of Nishi Honganji. At this time, women were considered inferior to men, but Lady Kujo was engaged in missionary work and spoke at temple gatherings. With her sister-in-law, Lady Kazuko Otani, Lady Takeko Kujo established ladies' clubs, which eventually developed into the Fujinkai, now the Buddhist Women's Association. Lady Kujo was well known for her charitable work in the slums of Tokyo. During the Kanto earthquake of 1923, Fujinkai members from throughout Japan donated food and, food and clothing, and Lady Kujo and her helpers distributed them to those affected by disaster. At about the same time, closer to home, the Japanese immigrants to Hawaii were facing harsh conditions in the coffee fields and sugar and pineapple plantations. In his book, Dharma Treasures, Spiritual Insights from Hawaii's Shin Buddhist Pioneers, Reverend Tatsuo Muneto captures the lives of the Issei women from Kona as they struggled to adapt to this new land and to grow in their Buddhist faith. One of these women, Haru Matsuda, struggled with an unsettled heart and a troubled mind. She felt that others were more compassionate and aware than she. She sought the advice of Reverend Kenkyo Murota, resident minister of the Kona Honganji Temple. He replied, are you trying to fix your mind by yourself? That's ridiculous, like trying to squeeze size six feet into a pair of size five shoes. When she asked what to do, he replied, a pair of size six shoes have already been made by the shoemaker and they're waiting for you. Reverend Muneto sees this as a metaphor for discovering the life that fulfills our deepest aspirations. It is a life of the Nembutsu in accordance with the primal vow. Come, just as you are. The Kona Issei women wrote poems in which they shared their spiritual journeys. And this is one of my favorites because I can relate to it. She says, Embraced by Namu Amida Butsu, I vowed not to complain. Thinking thus, I again complained. I recently read 
the book Memoirs of a Buddhist Women Missionary in Hawaii by Shigeko Kikuchi. Shigeo, I'm sorry. I honestly picked it up thinking I might find a quote or two for this talk. Instead, I found the book to be a fascinating read. Mrs. Kikuchi came from Japan in 1914 to join her husband, who was a Japanese minister at Wailuku Honganji. Her husband was later transferred to Naolehu. She describes the harsh living conditions, the lack of electricity, the lizards. As a minister's wife, Mrs. Kikuchi taught Dharma school and Japanese language school. She walked miles to offer the teachings to people in Waiohinu. She helped people write letters to their families in Japan. She boarded school children at her home. During World War II, when her husband was interned on the mainland, Mrs. Kikuchi took over many of his duties. After a period of time, she was given the opportunity of joining her husband in the internment camp. Instead, she chose to stay in Naolehu to continue the Nembutsu teachings and to offer support to Naolehu and Pahala residents. In the face of hardship and tragedy, the women of the Honganji have worked hard to deal with the tribulations of daily life while spreading the Nembutsu. All of you, all of us, face hardships in our lives. Eshini's life was more difficult than I can imagine. Every day she faced issues of survival. Yet her passion to build a memorial to her husband, Shinran, changed the course of Jodo Shinshu. Takeko Kujo rallied women to form the Buddhist Women's Association at a time when women did not have power in society. And in the process, she left a legacy which continues to this day. The Issei women in Hawaii faced struggles and hardships in the fields yet found time to listen to and share the Nembutsu teachings. Shigeo Kikuchi spread the teachings and offered support and comfort to others in spite of the challenges she faced in her own life. Each of them, each of you, did this while also tending to the responsibilities of home, career, family, and community. Just over a year ago, the shutdown due to the pandemic was imposed. The BWA, however, did not shut down. Instead, they actualized a phrase in His Eminence Gomonshu Kojun Otani's pledge where he says, moving away from self-centeredness, I will share a life of joy and sorrow with others, just like the Buddha whose caring heart always embraces us. Our members went to work. Realizing there was a shortage of masks which would protect people from the spread of the virus, BWA members began sewing masks. They contacted hospitals, care homes, public agencies, and clinics to see who needed masks. This was a spontaneous response to a community need. Members have probably sewn and distributed over 6,000 masks throughout the islands. Some women sewed for six to eight hours a day, pricking their fingers and breaking many sewing machine needles along the way. When the island of Lanai had an outbreak, Hawaii Betsuin BWA members sewed and ship shipped masks to Lanai. Members of Maui United BWA sent masks and goodie bags to cheer people up. The president of Lanai Honganji BWA distributed the bags to those who needed them. When hospitals needed surgical caps, BWA members stepped up again to sew and distribute the caps. This entire effort was not organized from top down. It was individual members giving selflessly of their time and resources. They sewed alone at home, connected with others via phone or email, and established pickup and drop off routines that followed physical distancing guidelines. The work that the BWA members have done during the pandemic carries on the mission set by Lady Takeko Kujo and her ladies clubs a century ago. There are other parallels between the present and the past in Jodo Shinshu. As I mentioned earlier, famine was a fact of life in medieval Japan. Food insecurity has also been an issue during the pandemic, as so many people are temporarily out of work or have lost their jobs. Temple members and ministers, including BWA members, have found creative ways to help to address this need in their communities. 
Jikuen, Mo'ili Ili, and Betsuin BWA members are cooperating to provide meals to clients of Family Promise, an organization which helps the homeless. Lihui Honganji had a rice roundup in which they connected over, I'm sorry, in which they collected over 3,000 pounds of rice to donate to the Kauai Independent Food Bank. As part of an interfaith effort, the BWA and the Junior Young Buddhist Association of Kapa'a Honganji helped to pack and deliver 713 meals to those in need. Kona Honganji had a food drive and then distributed the food to community members via drive through at their temple parking lot. The Hilo Betsuin Junior Young, Young Buddhist Association has been preparing and delivering meals to elders on Sunday nights. As a tribute to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Puna Honganji held a food drive and collected 1,300 pounds of food as well as monetary donations which they presented to the Hawaii Island Food Basket. Since 2019, the Honoka'a Honganji Peace Committee has conducted a weekly Feeding the Keiki and Kupuna program. During that time, they have provided 11,000 meals to those in their community. During the pandemic, they changed the program to a drive-through or walk-up distribution in order to continue this valuable service. These large-scale efforts have been supplemented by the individual efforts of members, such as grocery shopping for others in their temples who are unable to do so, or preparing meals for those who can no longer cook for themselves. Last summer, Honolulu United BWA asked members and friends to submit reflections and photos on the effect of the pandemic and the lockdown has had on them. They received 90 replies from members of Hawaii Betsuin, Mo'ili Ili, and Jikuen. To cope with the situation, many turned to exercise, walking, and being more observant of nature. To ease the loneliness of isolation by connecting to others, they wrote letters and cards to other members of their temples and made phone calls to check on their friends. They did things to help others, such as cooking and shopping for those who couldn't get out. They turned to the Buddhist teachings and appreciated the many services which the Honganji offered on YouTube and Zoom. What struck me most, though, was the universal sense of gratitude that they expressed. They felt appreciation for their families who checked on them and helped them with shopping. They were grateful for the Buddhist teachings and the ministers who offered the online services. This experience seems to have made us all more aware of and appreciative of things that we might normally take for granted. Like Ishini, they were striving to live the Nimbutsu in challenging times. In a talk to the BWA Federation Board in September, our immediate past president, Irene Nakamoto said, and I'm quoting this whole next paragraph from her talk, for Shinran, our actions are best when rooted in a mind of faith that deeply understands and appreciates our interdependence. That deep mind gives us inner peace and security and provides a strong foundation in which to confront the world's problems. Thus, tumultuous times may upset the world, but our minds will not be upset by the world's problems. Anchored by this mind of faith, we can see the situation of our lives more clearly and act more responsibly, helping others as if they were family." End quote. From the time of Shinran Shonin and Lady Eshini almost 800 years ago, to the work of Lady Kujo helping others during times of disaster, to Issei women working in the fields, to the way we respond to the present pandemic, we see examples of women striving to live the Nembutsu and fostering interdependence in ways that benefit others. Namo Amina Butsu. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Lois, for sharing your inspiring message. We will now show a special PowerPoint presentation on the history of the BWA Hawaii scarf that was produced in collaboration with Shar Kihara of the Hompahonganji Hawaii Betsuin BWA. I'm Barbara Fujimoto of the Hompahonganji Hilo Betsuin BWA, and this is the story of the BWA Hawaii scarf honoring Eshini.
It started at the 16th World Buddhist Women's Convention in San Francisco in September 2019. BWA members from all over the world attended the convention. Quote, like the cherry blossom, the heart planning on tomorrow is ephemeral indeed. What sudden storm may not arise in the middle of the night? End quote. Shinran Shonin 1181 on the tonsure at the age of nine at Shode in Temple, Kyoto, Japan. The cherry blossoms represent Shinran Shonin, the founder of Jodo Shinshu. Lady Shini, wife of Shinran Shonin, has been inspirational to BWA members all over the world. Her gravesite at Ishino Sato Mausoleum and Temple is in Echigo, Japan, where Shinran was exiled. The Magnolia Kobus tree is planted next to the Arch Memorial in honor of Lady Ishini. The white Magnolia Kobus is said to represent purity, kindness, nobility, and spirituality. Thus, it was important to include this special flower in the scarf design as a way of honoring Ishini. Shar Kihara at Eshini Temple. As Eshini is revered for her dedication to Shinran, Kakushini is revered for planting the seeds that were to grow into today's Honganji. A monument in front of Otani Hombyo, Shinran Shonin's mausoleum, pays tribute to Kakushini's contributions. <laughs> Following the 2017 accession ceremony of the 25th Monchu, which was held at the Honzan in Kyoto, Japan, I was fortunate to visit the Kakushini Monument at Otani Hombyo with other BWA members from other temples during the post-accession tour. The tour, which was guided by Bishop Eric Matsumoto and Reverend Yuika Hasebe, traced the footsteps of Shinran Shonin and Lady Ishini. There was a lot of preparation by many BWA members from different temples to add a special touch to their convention attire. The Orange County Buddhist Church BWA members wore a striking scarf with their white blouses for their official convention group picture. Shar Kihara and I had a chance meeting with several members of the Orange County Buddhist Church BWA at the conclusion of the 16th World Buddhist Women's Convention, and discussion about their attractive custom design scarf became the impetus of the idea of having a BWA Hawaii scarf specially designed for all BWA Hawaii members to use as an optional accessory. The OCBC BWA scarf was designed with orange blossoms and the Honganji Sagari Fuji design, all in a purple background. The OCBC BWA embarked on designing their scarf after seeing the Los Angeles Nishi Honganji BWA custom designed scarf. Here I am modeling the two purple polo tops, the Magnolia Cobus shirt worn by Hompa Honganji Hilobitsui members and the Hawaii State BWA shirt with the lavender Sagari Fuji and yellow hibiscus design. The idea of designing a 36 inch square scarf to use in as optional fashion accessory to wear with the polo tops was my initial idea but along the way the scarf became even more than that as you will see. The OCBC BWA referred us to the company's shop for ties, now Candor Threads, based in Chicago, and granted us the permission to use their Honganji Sagari Fuji design for our scarf. We work with the artists from Candor Threads to create a 36-inch square scarf with the Hawaii State flower, the yellow hibiscus, and a white magnolia flower in opposite corners of the scarf. The Sagari Fuji is used as an all-over background design faced in various directions to add versatility to the scarf. The final element of the design was the golden chain around the outer edge of the scarf as a tribute to the golden chain of love 
and to the performance of the Golden Chain Gatha by the Hawaii delegation at the World Buddhist Women's Convention. Once the scarves were designed and produced by Candor Threads, BWA members throughout the state of Hawaii ordered scarves for their own use and to use as gifts as well. We have collected photos of BWA members in Hawaii and recipients of the scarves from other BCA temples for this presentation. Buddhist Churches of America Bishop Marvin Harada was a minister at Orange County Buddhist Church from 1986 until April 2020. His wife Gail is a member of OCBC BWA. Charlene Kihauer's friend, Reverend Mutsumi Wandra, is the head minister at the Orange County Buddhist Church and is a lecturer at the Institute of Buddhist Studies. Donna Sasaki, sister of Bishop Marvin Harada of the Tacoma Buddhist Temple BWA, composed the Gatha Golden Chain and gave her permission via Wendy Umori for the Hawaii delegation to use the Gatha for their Hula Sign Language performance at the 16th World Buddhist Women's Convention. My friend, Ruth Harada, Donna and Bishop Harada's mother, lives in Ontario, Oregon, and is a member of the Idaho, Oregon Buddhist Temple. Ruth and her husband Hideo were very kind to me when I lived in Idaho and attended the Idaho Oregon Buddhist Temple services. Yuki Hoshide of Nampa, Idaho, and her daughter Kathy Hoshide Chatterton of Boise, Idaho, are also members of the Idaho Oregon Buddhist Temple. Kathy is a minister's assistant at Idaho Oregon Buddhist Temple and has been my friend since 1973 when she drove me to the IOBT for temple services when I lived in Caldwell, Idaho as an exchange student. Sandy Adachi Belknap lives in Foodland, Idaho and is also a member of the Idaho Oregon Buddhist Temple and has also been my friend since 1973. My first cousin, Lois Okino Dia, lives in Sunnyvale, California, is a member of the Mountain View Buddhist Temple, BWA, and attended the 16th World Buddhist Women's Convention in San Francisco with me. Carol Tsutsumi, seen on the left, the immediate past president of the Hompa Honganji Hilo Betsuin BWA was instrumental in creating interest in the BWA Hawaii scarf and communicating with the United BWA units throughout the state during the ordering and delivery process. Her enthusiasm and attention to detail were invaluable. I'm wearing my scarf with a mustard colored shirt to emphasize the golden chain and standing in my very favorite place in Hilo, the Liliokalani Gardens. This is Minako Kamuro, wife of Reverend Joshin Kamuro of Hompahonganji Hilo Betsuin, seen on the left, and Jan Koya on the right, who is a member of the Hompahonganji BWA, show unique ways to wear their scarves. This is Aki Baba, wife of Reverend Daido Baba of Hompa Hongonji Hilo Bitsui, found some very unique ways to tie her scarf. On the left is Mrs. Wakako Yoshida of Papaloa Honganji. She is a longtime member and a past president of Papaloa Honganji BWA. On the right is Carol Tsunizumi of Punahonganji BWA with the view of Gila Bay and Snowtop Mauna Kea in the background. From left to right, here is Sally Tayama, president of the Popeye Kohonganji BWA, Mrs. Noriko Kawagoi, wife of Reverend Shinji Kawagoi, and Nancy Watanabe of the Popeye Kohonganji BWA. Amy Hirohata Goto, Hompa Honganji, Hawaii Betsuin BWA member, is on the left, and Wendy Yumori, secretary for the Honolulu United BWA, is on the right, showing the Magnolia Cobus design on their scarves.
Diane Ida on the left and Cynthia Alm on the right, immediate past president and newly installed president for the Hompa Hongaji Hawaii Betsue BWA. Shar Kihara is currently the Hompa Hongaji Hawaii Betsue BWA secretary, seen on the left, and Sharon Sakine, Hawaii United BWA president, is on the right. Here are our friends at GCOEN. On the top row is Doris Oshiro on the left, Riven Shindo Nishiyama and Myrtle Hirayama on the right. In the middle row, Suzy Nishiyama, Riven Nishiyama's wife, and Doreen Nibu, president of GCOEN BWA. On the bottom row, it's Janet Wakakua on the left and Jean Oshiro. On the top row is Natsue Oshiro, on the left and Maisie Sakoda on the right and in the middle you'll see Terry Jean Arakaki and on the bottom row is Myrna Nishihara and Haruko Okita. Here on the top left is Lillian Gima and Sandy Toma on the right. In the middle row is Amy Oshiro, Karen Tamanaha and Alice Kino. And on the bottom row is June Nakamasu, past president, and Doris Takara. Don't you just love all the things they can do with a scarf? Here are some other unique ways to use a scarf. The top row is Claire Uehawa's daughter and Judy Muramoto. The middle row, Hawaii Federation BWA president, Lois Toyama. And on the bottom row, the scarf used as a fudoshiki created by Claire Uehara. The BWA Hawaii Scarf Project has been meaningful in that it has become a symbol of unity and inclusiveness, honoring all BWA members in the state of Hawaii and Lady Eshini as well. Giving the scarf as gifts to friends and family is like the golden chain stretching around the world sharing our gratitude for the special relationships we share and to acknowledge that we are fortunate to travel together on this unrepeatable journey called life. Thank you to the Orange County BWA for inspiring us to create our own BWA Hawaii scarf. Thank you to Becky Feinberg Galvez and her staff at Candor Threads for their assistance in making our BWA Hawaii scarves for all of us to treasure. Thank you to Shar Kihara for the awesome PowerPoint and thank you to Carol Tsutsumi for assisting in the ordering and delivery process. And thank you to all the BWA members who purchased scarves and sent in photos to use for this PowerPoint. Today we are honored to have our own BJ Soriano to sing our Buddhist women's pledge song that she wrote with Michael Springer.
let us sing the Nembutsu as the closing gatha. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Rimban Takahashi and Reverend Baba for their assistance in today's service. Thank you to Charlene Pasquale for playing the organ, Dojun Baba for ringing the concho, and the BWA Hanatati group for the beautiful altar arrangements. Thank you to Lois Toyama for being our guest speaker via Zoom. And thank you to Shar Kihar for the special PowerPoint presentation of the BWA Hawaii scarf. Thank you to BJ Soriano for sharing her song, Buddhist Women's Pledge with us for the program. Thank you to Bert Suchia for your technical support for today's Zoom service. And thank you for all the participants who came to the temple today for today's service. Before we close today's service with reciting the Nembutsu, please unmute your mic so that we can hear everyone's Nembutsu harmony. Let's close with the Nembutsu and repeat after me. <laughs> Namo Amidabutsu. 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 Namo